home of stark images and fascinating concepts. The image of two disembodied stone legs, alone in the middle of the desert, represents how small and insignificant even the greatest human accomplishments are in the long run. When I read the poem, it scares me to think of how small anything I do will be in a hundred years from now. Yet, at the same time, it's nice to think that all of the bad things that happen on a daily basis are just so minor. As a seventh grader, Ozymandias really speaks to me. There's just so much going on and everything seems so important that sometimes it's hard to step back and look at things in the big picture. I also like Ozymandias because I like history. When I read and study the past, I think about how events are significant, if at all, in the modern day. In Ozymandias, all that remains of an extremely powerful king after the passage of time is a pile of lifeless ruins in the desert. When I read the poem, it raises another eerie question. What will become of our civilization, our skyscrapers and massive bridges, in several hundred years? Certainly, the United States will eventually lose its status as a world power. But how will we be remembered? Will we even be remembered at all? Only time can tell. Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert, near them, on the sand half sunk, a shattered visage lies whose wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck. Boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Oh, my God.